almost everyone I know has woken up on the sandy beaches of Minecraft at least once in their life. Unsure of what to do, you set out to explore the beautiful infinite landscape. Celebrating its 10th birthday this year, Minecraft is a game about placing blocks and going on adventures. Its simple and open-ended design allows anyone to play, create and share their own stories. I want to take some time today to look back at my own history with the game and see just how its unique life influenced not just how I play, but how hundreds of millions of others do as well. My Minecraft journey started in late February of 2010, where development versions of the game had been out for around 9 months. At this time, InfDev was introduced, an update to bring the staple of infinitely generated worlds to the game. However, as a poor 13 year old, I couldn't afford a premium membership to the game, eradicating any chance I had to play the survival experience. Instead, my first year of Minecraft was built around the free web-based version, simply titled Classic. Classic mode was very bare bones. Within a small generated world and a very limited selection of blocks, you could build anything you wanted. Community servers started hosting lobbies where players could build together, and soon after when Notch abandoned Classic for InDev, modded Community Classic servers started to release with new game modes. Remember some of the classic Minecraft minigames like Spleef and Lava Survival? These started here on Classic Multiplayer. I remember moving computers and laptops into the same room to play with my brother and friends, jumping from server to server on the public listings at the end of every game. But my experience with Classic would eventually come to an end though on the day the Minecraft servers collapsed. On September 18th of 2010, Minecraft had its first of few free weekends. Anyone, not just premium players, could now play the survival mode of the game. This was my first real introduction to weapon systems, health, actual mining and crafting, but most importantly, the monsters. Very few people knew what they needed to do. The Minecraft wiki was still very young, so you still need to figure out everything yourself. These days were very similar to the early days of arcade and console games, with various recipes and rumours being spread around on message boards, IRC chats and between friends on <laughs> MSN Messenger. I will always remember my first night, as it was one of the scariest experiences I had ever had in the game. I began exploring and collecting basic materials, but I hadn't yet seen any Let's Plays like the infamous C Nanners video which only just came out a few weeks prior, so I knew nothing about the night except the monsters existed. As the sun began to fall, creepers, zombies and spiders started to spawn while I rushed to create my first dirt hut. I sat inside for the night, the longest seven minutes I've experienced in the game, as all sorts of creepy noises emanating from the monsters outside echoed throughout the landscape. No beds existed yet, so there was no way of skipping the night. The only way to defend yourself was to physically attack, but knowing nothing about surviving yet, I was stuck inside. I remember taking off my headset because I was uh, that scared of the noises at the time. I was a young kid. <laughs> my journey continued from this point very similar to everyone else's. I made my first oak wood house, went spelunking and found diamonds after various attempts and died repeatedly to creepers, skeletons, spiders, zombies and the like. I was able to convince my parents into buying me the proper premium version of the game because I really wanted to receive the first big Halloween 2010 update later that month, which added the first extra dimension, the nether. But then Minecraft's community started to grow and some of my friends at school started to play the game. Copies of cracked clients were being passed around on USB sticks to play in our school issued MacBooks, opening everyone up to a whole new world of multiplayer shenanigans. Around this time, I started to take filmmaking and animation more seriously, so my parents helped me purchase a new laptop. But because of this, I had the old family laptop just sitting around doing nothing, and it wasn't long before I repurposed this into a 24-7 Minecraft server. Through playing on various online servers and introducing school friends to the game, I started to build a pretty decent community of friends who would always be willing to play. From what started as a basic vanilla server, quickly evolved into a complex interconnected web of plugins built around a bucket server. I started to host minigame parties for friends, building spleef arenas and hosting PvP tournaments, from running these manually to eventually becoming fully automated using server plugins. We built towns and cities, learned how to use redstone and code our own mods, but then something bigger started to come along that changed how people played Minecraft. Minigames. So many new game modes spawned from this. Games like Skyblock, Factions, UHC, there are just too many to list. But for me, one took over my life. Survival games. Built on what would eventually become the Battle Royale genre, 
This was based on the Hunger Games book series which had a movie coming out later that year. I started through hosting matches on my own server by running things manually, but as the community for it started to grow, automated servers like those at MCSG started to appear. My friends jumped between servers, chasing down opportunities to play together, and if I can say, we got pretty good at it. Through the survival games, I met some of my closest friends to this day, a few who also helped me transition into the next stage of my Minecraft journey. Minecraft really grew into itself thanks to YouTube. Let's Plays drew people in, building tutorials showed others how to build bigger and better, and films entertained the rest. I started out like any 15 year old at the time, making Let's Play videos with my friends on YouTube. We played adventure maps and hosted survivor multiplayer servers, one called Technicore, which ran for 20 episodes over our grade 11 exam period. You could tell we kinda didn't want to do our maths exams. But over time, I started to blend my love of making films with my friends into the game, creating what are known as machinimas as well as animations, which started to receive more and more views on my channel. And suddenly, my totally successful Let's Play career was over. Through friends, I met the one to fear, a Minecraft machinima creator who has become one of my best friends over the years. He introduced me to the crew at Machinima Realm, and at the time was producing a series for them called The Land of Madrid. We made lots of machinimas together, with me providing VFX, animations, body acting, whatever, to really push them beyond what anyone else was creating at the time, including a 24 minute space epic which was actually really cool. This story leads me to me meeting Mitch, or the Beijing Canadian, and producing various animated music videos that received over 100 million views and, wait, am I reading this right, debuted on the Billboard charts at number 1 for Comedy Digital and number 38 for Dance Electronic Sons? What? This also boosted me up in the Minecraft animation community, growing enough to be able to produce a bunch of Minecraft animated shorts to premiere in that gaming show in my parents' garage on Disney XD, which was a surreal experience. But then, high school was over, and I had to actually start focusing on my life. I had responsibilities, and I had to look after myself. University took over all of my free time, making film assignments with Bailey of Loverboy Media, and I started to play less and less games. Being out for nearly half my life now, I've grown dramatically since Minecraft's release. It has taught me problem solving through Redstone, let me bond with my close friends, or provided me an avenue to sit back, relax, and listen to the glory of C418 soundtrack. Minecraft has gone through a lot of changes in the last 10 years, and so have I. New items, new mobs, even mine coins. But what really keeps me playing is my memory of it. My memory of a time where I didn't have to worry, where school was just a blur, and gaming with my friends is all that really mattered to me. A time where I was simple, and Minecraft was as well. Mm -hmm.